This video offers a summary and a comparison of the three different MCAS techniques covered in these videos. So this chapter has shown how constraint inequalities can be defined for OMPC, SOMPC or in other words dual mode algorithms. It's also presented some efficient MATLAB code for forming the minimal number of inequalities required to ensure constraint satisfaction over an infinite horizon. So what we're going to do here is take some of the examples from videos 10 to 13 and construct the MCAS using the proposed algorithm and compare it with some of the earlier approaches. So first a summary of what it is we need to do. First, we define the dynamics in terms of an autonomous model format, something like this, where we ensured that the limit as k goes to infinity of phi k is zero. Now there's a little caveat here. You don't actually need to ensure that for the modes which appear in the part of the constraint set that you're not going to iterate. And you remember that with the constraint set, oops, sorry, that's uh, went too fast, we split it into two parts. We had the part which you had to sample, which you had to ensure at every sample, and we had the part that actually you only had to ensure at k equals zero. The autonomous model formulation was given a bit like this, where you'll remember we had this part here, which we defined as Z, and you could very easily find the relationship between ZK plus 1 and ZK, and you could write down the expressions using this simple state transition, Psi. The constraints at each sample for input constraints, state constraints, and so on, could be written down using blocks like this, the top block for input constraints, the next block for state constraints, and the final block for limits on R minus D, where again, you noticed we said that the top bit, the G1, which is the bit up here, we said had to be satisfied at every sample, whereas the bottom bit, the bit down here, only had to be satisfied at the first sample. Requirements on targets. We said the steady state had to satisfy certain constraints because otherwise the steady state was infeasible. Now what you'll find is that in practice you may need even stricter limits than these to ensure feasibility. So these conditions, here's the key point, they are necessary for the MCAS to exist and converge, but they're not sufficient, but we're not going to go into those subtleties because that's beyond the remit of this particular chapter. So what code have we got? So we've given you a piece of code, OMPC simulate underscore efficient, which uses the efficient admissible set algorithm. Now here's a key thing. If the limits that you put in for R minus D are generous, then you might need a large number of inequalities to capture the MCAS. And if I give a simple example, if the MCAS is up here and your steady state is essentially on the boundary, you may have an iteration which only gets to the, that point asymptotically. And as a consequence, that's why you might need a large number of inequalities to ensure that. And that's why we've recommended you always choose your steady states to be strictly inside the boundary. And then what you'll find is the number of iterations is much smaller. OK, what we're going to do next is we're going to do a simple comparison of the different MCAS methods discussed in this video series. What are the three methods? Method number one, find MAS underscore tracking. This was very simple code, very easy to follow, but it had no removal of redundant constraints, either at the end or in the middle, and therefore it was extremely inefficient. Second method, which we used in SOMPC constraints, um, here the constraints were easy to define because we just calculated the predictions for a given horizon and said make sure those predictions satisfy constraints. But again, this could be hugely inefficient as you're going to be carrying around a large number of redundant inequalities and you also needed to make an arbitrary choice of horizon to ensure it was large enough. And the final method which we did in the last video, is construct underscore MES tracking, which will give you the minimal number of constraints required to capture your MCAS. However, that does require to work well explicit and feasible limits on the signal R minus D, and that is not something you need 
here. And that's where the difference is. If you don't give sensible limits on the signal um, R minus D, then this code could be very, very slow. So first of all, video 515, example 1. The actual example, if you look at the code, runs the simulation for you. But if you want to go and look at the different set calculation techniques, if you used find MAS tracking, you ended up with 26 inequalities, many of which would be redundant. If you use the more efficient code, 16 inequalities, which is far fewer. If you use, I'm simply going to predict, the SOMPC constraints algorithm, you have to choose an arbitrary prediction horizon. And generally speaking, people might go as large as 20. Well, with six inequalities at each sample, that could add up to 120 inequalities. So you see immediately that this last one could be highly inefficient. If you look at example two, now we've got a slightly different result. In this particular one, if you use the find MAS tracking algorithm, which doesn't remove any redundancies at all, it didn't converge until you had 1644 inequalities, which is a huge number. And it took on my computer about 100 seconds in order to calculate that. However, if you used the construct MAS tracking algorithm, you only ended up with 35 active inequalities. It still took 10 seconds, which is not trivial, but it's an awful lot quicker than 100 seconds. And the result is, of course, orders of magnitude simpler. If you use the SOMPC constraints algorithm, then you would have whatever prediction horizon you chose times the 10 inequalities at each sample. So if you took a horizon of around 20, which is being conservative, you could end up with about 200 inequalities. So it's not as efficient as the example above, but it's simple to define where that's what you want. Now here's the warning. This particular example has only three states, and already you can see the number of equalities you might end up with if you don't use an efficient algorithm is totally unmanageable. And there's a problem because if you're going to go to examples which have 10 states or 20 states, many inputs and many outputs, Clearly, the number of inequalities you need is going to grow very quickly, so an efficient algorithm is essential. Just an illustration that these examples work. So in this particular case, you can see there's three states. If you, if you compare the sample constraints with the MCAS, they might look the same at first impressions. But then if you start looking at some of the numbers, minus 1 down here, minus 2, down here, then you'll see very quickly they're actually not the same at all. The MCAS is different from the sample constraints. The algorithms are doing something. You need to use them. Now, the importance of feasibility. If you look at video 5, 15, example 3, this gives a case where we've deliberately chosen stupid limits on R&D, which are excessively large and therefore not achievable. Now, in this particular case, if you try to use the find MAS underscore tracking, basically it would fail. It wouldn't be able to deal with it and you'd get nowhere. However, if you use the efficient algorithm, it does manage to converge. But if you do a projection of the eventual MCAS that it gives you, what you find is it tells you, it says, look, the limits you set on R&D are simply not achievable. And it forces you to have much lower limits on R&D than you originally allowed it. But convergence can still be very slow because you've got this issue that the steady state is going to be on the boundary. And therefore, it's not going to converge until you get close to numbers like EPS, however EPS is defined on MATLAB. Now, we're not going to dwell on feasibility in this chapter because it's quite a big and complicated issue. But what we're trying to do is highlight the importance of this issue so you don't ignore it in the long term. So a summary. This video has utilized an efficient algorithm for determining the MCAS for OMPC and SMPC and show that it can work. The MCAS is based on an augmented state, which includes the target steady state, and thus it's flexible to changes in the target and the disturbance. And the key thing is online changes. You don't need to change your MCAS just because the target and disturbance have changed. However, 
the target must be reachable and that could be steady state reachable but it also needs to be feasible during transience which is a subtle issue we've not dealt with quite yet. If the limits on R&D are poorly chosen the code can be very slow to converge and just a reminder ensuring feasibility is beyond the remit of this chapter.